Hello and welcome to a stream of Race Room. We're into the last couple of hours of the first Oscaro Esports WTCR event. Um, there's about two hours of qualifying left and then the top 120 will go through to actually race at the moment the top of the table is Jack Keefley for William Esports or Williams Esports rather um, in the Hyundai uh, he's done a time of 150.282 120 is a cut off of the race which takes place on Sunday 18th of August and currently 120th is Tommy Rizier, Riziri, uh, 151.601, which is 1.3 seconds off the lead time. He's in the Audi, the RS3 LMS. And then there's me. I'm currently down, down further, down further, down further. There I am, 1008th, we have a time of 154.891, which is 4.6 seconds off the fastest time, again in the Audi, but I'm actually quite happy with that so far, because I would never raced in any competitive race room um, qualifying sessions before, I'm using a pad, I haven't got a tuning set up of any sort on the car, I'm just driving it as standard. And originally my time was over two minutes. Yeah, I think I started off my first ever lap was about two minutes eleven. So over time I've managed to get down by about fifteen seconds, which isn't a bad amount to knock off a lap time. And when you think I'm four point six seconds off the fastest time, you can probably take off about a second or so maybe if I had a wheel and pedal set up, which is definitely planned for the near future. Um, actually having a tuning set up on the car probably another second maybe maybe even more so if you take those off I'm about two and a half seconds off the fastest time only about a second off qualifying for the actual race which isn't too bad especially when you consider I have done a total of 230 laps in the game and even the guys around the same level me have done 852 61 this chap's done 7000 1400 so there are some people with even less experience than me but there's a lot of people you know 27,000 laps and he's only at the moment 0.02 of a second ahead of me now obviously they might have only done one quick qualifying lap and then decided not to do any more they might have had other reasons for not necessarily posting their best possible time but it still means that I'm fairly respectable and also just to make myself feel a little bit better the total number of races in this so far is 3074 so I'm in the top third which you know for my first ever attempt at qualifying for any kind of event in race room a car I'm not used to, a truck I'm not used to that's not too bad so what I have been doing to get my times down rather than trying to beat my own ghost I've been looking for someone, so I'm currently 154, I'm looking for someone about half a second quicker than me, because that way if I can't beat them I'm still doing okay, and I can still improve my time just by following them. Ideally someone in a similar car, because that removes a few of my excuses, so we'll have a look at this one for example. Might even go a little bit higher to push myself, seeing as there's only about two hours left. There you go, Robin Trinks. Let's try challenging him. And we'll see whether I can just move up a little bit. I'd like to be in the top 1,000. I mean, it did get my hopes up when I first qualified, because the only about 500 people had actually posted times, and I was in the top few hundred. And even though I knew it was a bit unrealistic to come and qualify for my first ever race, I did get my hopes up a little bit, but those have been rapidly turned back in something a bit more realistic now. So fingers crossed I might be able to improve a bit, get in the top thousand and that will be enough for me with not very long left in qualifying to go. There are six more rounds, so qualifying is open for all of them. Um, 
so I will be switching to one of the later circuits and seeing how I do. But for now, I'm going to give it a few laps in Gordon Shedden's Audi RS3 LMS and see how I do. So coming on to the main straight. Hungara Ring is a tricky circuit. It's one of those ones where every corner seems designed to trick you into going into it a bit faster than you'd like. As I immediately show. It's a bit neater. This is a tricky bit. Their gear. It's a corner that I always seem to overrun on a bit. Nice, oh, taking a much wider line than me through there. Whoa, he's pretty much in the gravel. wide through there and in a higher gear than I'd normally take it. I think I normally drop down to third. The challenge of talking and driving. Wind on the power. I can be about half a second behind him when I cross the line and that will still improve my time but 1.8 is a bit much that's much better much worse. Oh, might be closer this time. Braked a bit too hard there. I was worrying about mucking up the lap by not braking enough. Oh, there we go. I've improved my time already. The question is, can I do any better? Thank you. 
No, our airline definitely works better through there. I was going to cut the corner there a bit. I can probably take that last corner a bit wider and carry more speed onto the straight. It seems to be working out for him. But there we go. Almost in the top 900. I was so excited, I didn't even spot that I changed up to sixth gear. Oh, I don't think I'm going to do it this lap. It's just a case of thinking about which corners I'm struggling with and maybe experimenting with doing things slightly differently. So there, it's really about getting that line right. And this one, I'm really not sure about the optimum way to get around that corner. It seems to be kind of a constant radius, but then the faster line seems to be maybe late apexing a bit. Out a bit. Right. And then this one, I always have a habit of going too fast and understeering. In my defence, it's quite hard on this um, particular gamepad to do gradual braking. The Xbox One controllers aren't too bad, and I've got plenty of experience racing in things like Forza and learning how to brake gradually in throttle brake, but this is a third party pad and the throttle and brakes are a bit on off. So I'll add that to my bucket of excuses. Right, let's try not to accidentally put myself in the wrong gear coming down to here again. A little bit slow on accelerating as the corner opened up there. Yeah, no, that wasn't good. I was doing well to start with. One of the reasons I try and pick someone that's about half a second or more quicker than me is to get up the mindset of trying to overtake the ghost. Because sometimes you can slip into kind of the racing habit and thinking that you've got to take a slightly different line to get past him and be pushing it a bit too much. Whereas if you pick someone that's that bit quicker, generally you can feel happier following. Right, let's take a wide line here. And carry a bit more speed onto the straight, hopefully. Can I get in the top 900? That would be a heck of an achievement for today. Oh, here goes.
And that's gone wrong. I guess I've got to catch him now in the next bit. I mean, he said that. I'm running his tail again. I might be able to rescue this lap after all. Ooh, just left it in third a little too long. The gearing definitely isn't quite right this track. Definitely not the best line through the final corner. One of the things I'm definitely missing on this game is having teammates, ideally ones that know something about car setup. I kind of know the basics, but I haven't had time to really delve into how race room differs because every game handles car physics and tuning slightly differently. I know with my experience of Forza, some of the things you think will have a certain effect actually don't. And sometimes it can be a little counterintuitive. Oh, that's gone wrong now. And there are um, plenty of people on the um, racing forums or various other sites that are sharing tips but it's one of those trial and error things where you need enough time to pick someone's advice, give it a try pick someone's advice, give it a try to get there and there is a part of me that doesn't really want to spend too much time setting cars up when I'm going to switch to wheel and pedal setup which might feel a bit different if I've set up things like the braking etc for a pad then I'm going to have to do it all again as soon as I get a wheel and pedal so I didn't expect to make it into the multiplayer racing aspect of the this series. This is just a learning experience. So I figured for the time being I will persevere. Standard car, gamepad, and you've probably noticed Oh that that's that's gone badly. You probably noticed I've got a racing line on, which you know is a little bit cheeky perhaps, but I figure it balances up my lack of experience. And also, when I'm good enough to be crashing into the pit wall whilst talking, I think I'm allowed the uh, racing line on. Right, so this lap's compromised already. But we'll see if I can maybe try a deeper line. Definitely the tight line works better around there. Okay, get up the gears. There's an apex there somewhere. Got there eventually. Straight line this as much as I can. Miss changing up. Because I'm trying to drive and talk. Which is harder than it seems. Down the fourth. Late turn in there. Yeah, that lost me a fair bit of time. So he's definitely going in a lot later than me and coming back for a later apex. So next lap, I'll definitely try that. Still don't know how to take a chicane properly. Definitely enjoy those corners though. And this is the final time the course tries to sucker you into going around too fast and completely missing the apex, as I've done. Using all the curbs.
Oh, went in a bit fast. Went a bit wide. Was a bit slower than accelerating. Aside from that, really good. Oh, and there are thereabouts. If I can just stick with him a bit closer. Right, do not muck this corner up. Do not muck this corner up. Concentrating for a split second, dropped into my old habit of taking that corner too tight. And then wrecked on the chicane. But we'll see how fast it would have been. Well, not very by going in too fast there. One thing I'm trying to do, which I think is helping, a lot of people kind of have the perception if you're hot lapping qualifying it means spending hours and hours going over the same course which it does if you want to get really good but I think the mistake is thinking you have to do it all in one go so what I've been experimenting with a lot with race room is just coming on for 10 15 laps and taking a break doing some work or doing something else or just challenging a different driver then doing another 10 15 laps taking a break and that definitely seems to stop some of the kind of not necessarily boredom, but after a while you start making silly mistakes and start getting frustrated and it can get annoying seeing the same car disappearing at the distance all the time. quicker through that every time. And then it got very messy. I don't think this is going to be improvement, so I'm going to get one more go before taking a break. I'm trying something a bit different just for a laugh before I uh, finish up the day. Do another one now. And I've also slipped one place while I've been lapping. So obviously at least one other person coming on to try and improve their times in the last couple of hours. So at least one thing I am 
feeling happy about is I'm slowly but surely getting more consistent. It might not look like it from the way I'm driving, but compared to the earlier videos that I did and my first few laps I don't think I recorded, I'm slowly starting to look like I actually know where the corners go. Or I'm kind of careering round and generally ending up in the gravel a fair amount of time. Right, concentrate, focus, let's try and get this one done. Get back on his rear bumper. Harder than I wanted to, that. No! Mucked it all up. But it shows how tight and close this racing is. That even knocking a few hundredths of a second off my time moved me up almost a hundred spots. And there, one corner slightly wide was all the difference. So, let's have a look at the leaderboard now. So, there I am, 4.3 seconds off the fastest time, and I've moved up to 913th. I've dropped two spots since I recorded that lap. But still, that's almost a thousand places from where I, a thousand almost a hundred places from where I was so it shows how m even a tiny improvement can drop you up quite a lot of places and get you a lot closer so I said I was going to try one more thing uh, while there's time before everything ends for this particular qualifying and that's embarrassing myself by picking Jack Keefley's uh, ghost to race against. So obviously he's got the fastest time, he's on pole position for the race. He and a lot of the top sort of 10-15 drivers are all in the Hyundai, which I have tried driving. Um, it seems a lot more stable as standard than the Audi might be, but it's also a lot slower, particularly on the second half of the track. So I've found I tend to lead the ghost that I'm racing in the first half and then drop back. And I just figure with this amount of time before the event ends there's not much point in trying to get used to a different car so here we go against the fastest guy in the world at the moment for this particular event let's see how quickly he disappears well he's slightly faster than me down the straight already much better line through there. I'm using more of the curb. Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely a wider entry. God, he used a lot of curve. Oh, crikey. He used so much curve on the way into that chicane. I wouldn't have even thought of doing that, particularly. Because you would have thought that you wanted to try and straight line it more. And again, he's out. Ah. Oh. Let's just go down here for a bit. Look, nice scenery. Yeah, so he's definitely got a couple of spots where he's going a lot wider than I would have thought. And certainly the chicane, he's basically making it a sharper corner to presumably go in a bit slower, but come out with a lot more speed. The last, sort of towards the end of the track at the top of the hill, it was a bit hard to see exactly what he was doing because he was so far ahead by that point. See if I can keep him a bit close this one. I'll only give it another one or two laps because I'm not going to get anywhere near to his time. Yeah, so he's a lot faster down the straight, so he's already got a few temps on me. I've outbraked myself again. And the Hyundai is, you know, a standard, a better car around this bit of the track anyway. I think I'm actually doing worse this time, so that's going to be helpful. doing that I don't understand how he's doing that line yeah he's now more than a corner ahead so we're not even gonna see how he does this one I'm somewhere over here I see yeah, that, that makes sense now I'm actually trying it more It's really annoying the uh, timing difference that displays at that corner is pretty much impossible to look at while you're driving. It's not long enough up on the screen long enough for you to actually see it as you're coming down the straight, which is a bit infuriating. Right, let's take it wider here. See if I can at least keep up when going at the first corner. The yeah, Audi should be, I think, we're going to start. Oh, am I actually ahead of him going at the foot? No. Nope, can't even beam in a straight line in what I think might be a more powerful car. taking it tight again. Why have I taken that corner so tightly? Why? Took that a bit tight on the exit and put the curve a bit. I was about to say at least I can still see him this time and then I drove off the track. one last time and just see if I can keep him in sight for a bit longer. 
see how far behind I am this time. 53, 54. So I'm actually slower than my best time anyway. Yeah. Well, like these are my best laps. Oh god. I couldn't even see the apex from where I was. Completely screwed up the chicane again. Come back, Jack. Well, I think what that's showing is there's certainly a gap between using a pattern wheel, there's a gap between not fiddling about with the car at all, and, you know, the high end height does seem to be slightly more suited to this course because I know Jack's first pole time was set in the Audi so he's switched since then and Hyundai's are dominating the uh, leaderboard at the moment and I think also just having the skill and bravery to go across those curbs so much more and it's probably a reason why Jack deserves to qualify and race, and I don't at the moment, because even if I fluked it and managed to get across those curves successfully for a qualifying lap, I'd just be dangerous in a race at the moment, because I wouldn't be able to do it every single lap. I'd have a 50-50 chance of either making it round or just sailing into someone. Ah, oh, there's the apex. I knew it had one. I just hadn't seen it in some time. So I think the lesson here is just that I'm going to need to do a lot more practice. I'm probably not going to qualify for any of the races this season. But I am having a lot of fun learning some of the courses I haven't been to. Getting used to the handling of race room and the handling of this car. And it's free. You know, you can download race room for free. During this competition, the circuits and cars being used are free. So if you've got a PC capable of playing it and you want to break from other driving sims or you want to try your first driving sim, you know, you can get in the top thousand with a 20 quid third party Xbox pad and some practice. Which isn't bad. I'm just going to finish this lap just for the sake of it, even though I know it's going to be terrible. It's that weird thing about not wanting to stop in the racing line or just leave a lap before it's finished, even though this is a virtual game and it's not costing me anything. He's so much quicker down that straight. Oh, I'm in front of him, and I'm in the wall. But, for a millisecond, I was actually on the track in front of him. And that's where I'm leaving him. So, just to recap. I have now got to a 154.606, and 913th currently out of... 3,079, which I'm more than happy with. I've chopped several seconds off my uh, initial practice laps. Jack Keithley is still top. We are 150.282, despite my attempt to challenge him. Followed by Emre Sihan and Nicodem Whiskey, which I can't pronounce very well, so apologies for that. Um, as you can see, we've got Hyundai, 
Honda Civic, Hyundai, Hyundai, Honda Civic, Hyundai, 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 Hyundai. I mean, a lot of these guys are racing the same teams. So you've got you know the Williams Esports team. Uh, you've got M1RA or Mira Esports. You've got Euronix. So it makes sense that teammates will be driving the same cars, and they're all going to be towards the front of the grid. But Hyundai, Hyundai, Cupra. Say it is actually uh, 18th, and the first Audi is uh, Marit Lona. 150.606. So it definitely wasn't the car letting me down. It is possible to certainly get in the top 25. You can see we have a few different Audis there. So. I'm going to go back to the leaderboards, check how long is actually left on that. Uh, that's not what I was trying to click on. <sighs> Amateur. <coughs> there we go. So we have one hour and 30 left of the qualifying for the Hungara ring. We've got one week, one hour left of the Slovakia ring, which again is another circuit I've never driven in any race sim, I don't think. It from memory. Zandvoort is a circuit that I've seen on old videos of kind of touring cars. So that'll be interesting. The Nordschleife is the Nordschleife, so I know it, but it's very tricky. Suzuka. Now, I've got six weeks to practice that. It's a circuit I know and really like. I might actually have a chance. Macau. Again, it's a circuit that I know from real life watching on TV, particularly uh, the bike um, racing around there. But that's about it. And then you've got Sepang, which I think is one of the circuits you get for free with uh, Race Room anyway when you first download it. So if I've got hope of qualifying or being near the top of anything, I think it's going to be Suzuka and Sepang. But I'm going to start now practicing for Slovakia and just, you know, learn the circuit, enjoy driving the new circuit and see what time I can come up with. So. If you keep watching, you'll see me attempting that fairly soon. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.